Hi, my name is Luka Mustafa and I'm the developer of Kuruza, a 3D printable wireless optical system. Last August I have introduced prototype 1 of this device, uh, proving that it can be built at low cost. Then I've received support from Shuttleworth Foundation with a flash grant and then Knight Foundation with a small grant that enabled me to work on this project for the whole year for full time. I found an institute in Astracha that allows me to do this formally and properly. So with the experience and showing that it's possible to build a system like this at low cost, I've set to design prototypes and the designs that can be readily implemented built with a 3D printer and used in real world scenarios. So with prototype 2, as we can see here, uh, I've first shown that it can be 3D printed. Um, so just a proof of concept that a system like this is 3D printable and it can work. So all the crucial mechanic components are 3D printed. So it's sufficiently uh, accurate into the lining to have a 100 meter link set up and uh, so forth. Uh, to be able to do this, instead of buying a 3D printer, I've decided to build one myself and in collaboration with Drushtu Electronico Slovenia and Electronic Society, uh, we've designed this uh, printer based on Ultimaker Classic open source printer. This is Troublemaker and it's an improvement on the already posted uh, open source printer that's, and this is used to build all Kuruza prototypes. So um, knowing that a system like this can be 3D printed, uh, I set to build a useful unit. So prototype three of the system was similar to prototype four, which we can see here, um, but featured, um, let's say a ball joint for rotational alignment. So the arm is attached to it and it slides around the ball joint. Uh, which was quite interesting to see having it 3D printed, as well as X and Y translation for the lens uh, moving it up and down. Well, this is not really used uh, anymore uh, in future versions. It does show how nicely and properly built a uh, two directional uh, micrometer precision translation mount, um, and it can be used in other optical experiments in the lab as well. Um, so learning from some lessons on generation 3 prototype, uh, like having a linear translation stage used for adjusting the focus that has two plastic pieces that slide on each other, it's not the best idea and it's not very stable. Um, I've developed the new version which uses Teflon tubing as a sliding element between two plastic pieces. So with this idea, a linear translation stage that's already published open source, uh, that uses the Stefan sliding um, motorized alignment with micrometer precision has been designed and tested. This worked very well, so it has been used in prototype 4 development, which uses to translate the focus back and forth the Stefan tubing as the sliding element, um, integrates instead of the ball joint for rotational movement, just a rubber piece that allows the inner arm to be moved for a few degrees, which is sufficient for a design like this. Um, with this design, built in graphical uh, CAD software, um, three prototypes has be, have been constructed. So three links are now operational with this design. Uh, one at the Institute here, one at the Institute of Josef Stefan in Ljubljana at the distance of 180 meters, and another one mobile for demonstration and other kinds of testing. Um, so this generation 4, um, which uses also micrometer uh, motorized stage uh, for alignment, is mounted in an aluminium casing like this. Um, this just goes in and uh, it works fine. However, the problems we we're able to observe and measure now uh, are that the whole structure is susceptible to thermal expansion, meaning that when the laser beam is pointed at the other side, it does shift with the temperature variation and at 100 meters distance, it shifts about 30 millimeters with 10, 20 uh, degrees Celsius of uh, temperature difference. Now, um, this is quite significant and quite some power is lost due to that. Um, 
so solving some more problems now with um, so thermal expansion with the system being designed so it can be actually used as open source modified as open source generation 5 has been recently constructed and the generation 5 first of all it's constructed in open SCAD um, programming framework so parts can be properly redesigned by community only small changes made and they're very transparent the system is much more compact, featuring all the necessary parts in a single unit um, that you pretty much just slide into the casing um, that protects it from the outside and it serves as the support so the inner arm can move around and the link can be adjusted. So um, this whole system recently designed, it's uh, being now improved and it's being worked for to be ready for open source uh, release later this fall. Now the control electronics is the only other piece of the system. So motors, SFE modules, and all the rest connect to a Tiva C launchpad, which is a Texas Instrument launchpad, an arm board with a shield for controlling all the features. We built a system to control the electronics from the Wi-Fi router, so from OpenWRT uh, firmware. Um, there's a control, Kuruza control daemon that allows us to manually adjust uh, the units, uh, move them about, as well as collect sensor measurements at 1 or 10 hertz intervals, depends on the variable we're monitoring. So the system is now very simplified, much more robust, and is set to solve all the major issues we're seeing now, which is pretty much thermal expansion. Um, it is now slowly moving uh, forward. We are at the moment launching worldwide Kuruza experiment, inviting organizations and community networks to participate in the experiment, uh, make some donations so we can build enough units and deploy them around the world to see how well this works and create an open data set. But please see another video about this. So the future of uh, Kuruza is quite bright. Uh, the latest prototype, is being prepared for open source release uh, while building units for the worldwide experiment um, all the documentation will be produced and the system will be released later this fall for hackers to build and try we will consider making sets of uh, parts for everyone who might need them to build their own units as well as i'll be working on the system for the next year as my master's project improving on the design uh, applying uh, automatic tracking to it and solving all the problems to build a real robust solution that anyone can use. That's a very brief overview. For more information, please see the website, other videos, or ask on the mailing list. Thank you.